that okay? Sorry, we need to turn it off. Start again. Let's just keep it running. Yeah. 
Good morning, Royal Palm Church. Happy Mother's Day. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Jonathan Jones, one of the pastors here. Alongside Dr. Joe, we'll be bringing the message a little bit later on, and you just heard Dr. Erickson Rojas at the, the piano. Uh, we're blessed to have the, the Clifford's along with uh, their son, Nathan, who just graduated. Congratulations, Nathan. They'll be serenading at this morning. If you're new to us and we're joining online, thank you, Chris and Kathy, for making that possible. We're located at Jog and Epiluxo Road. Join us here at 1030 each Sunday. <coughs> now, this morning, we gather on uh, this Lord's Day to worship the risen Jesus Christ, the seed of the new Eve. We love and adore our God by honoring our mothers that we would live long in the land that God has promised Amen. us. And in a way, every Christian mother is a new Eve. I like how C.S. Lewis puts it. He says, to be a mother is a woman's greatest vocation in life. She is a partner with God. No being has a position of such power and influence. She holds in her hands the destiny of nations. For to her comes the responsibility and opportunity of molding the nation's citizens. Praise the Lord. Now, let's hear and respond to God's call to worship. You can find it printed in your bulletin. I'll read the light text and you can respond with the bulletin. Praise the Lord, for He is good. Sing praises to His name, for it is pleasant. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. You have compassion on those who love you. For this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> Erickson was playing a wonderful song just a minute ago. Of course, he plays a lot of music, but anybody know what he was playing? There is a balm in the Gilead. Mm -hmm. To heal the sin sick soul. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. And then I love this part. It says this. If you cannot preach like Peter. If you cannot pray like Paul. You can tell the love of Jesus. And say he died for all. There is a balm in Gilead. Good morning everybody. I'm so glad to see you here. It's Mother's Day. And it's a great day to begin. I put a lot in the bulletin today. Uh, more than you'll ever get through in here. But I did that so that you'll take it home. Don't leave any bulletins here. Take them home with you and enjoy them. Read some of those things that Irma Bombeck wrote. Oh, I miss her. She was such a wonderful <laughs> person, a great writer. And there's stories in there, so I hope that you'll take a look at them. The picture on the front, I've taken the, some, the, some, you know, like privileges, I guess, now and then through the years. That's my grandmother. Uh, my my great-grandmother, her name was uh, Alice Esther Winkins. And uh, her husband died when my mother was three years old and her youngest son was, at that time, was one year old, my Uncle John. Mm. And so she was a widow with four children. Whoa. And she had to raise four children and she worked real hard all of her life. And one of the things grandmother told me one time when I was there, because she had... A, a, a daughter, uh, Alice, and Alice married Dave, and they had kids, and, and she had, um, uh, anyway, to make the story short, uh, she told me I was her favorite grandson. <laughs> she said I was her favorite grandson. And so one day when Cousin Buddy was there, I said, Grandmother says I'm her favorite grandson. <laughs> and I said, she told me I was her favorite grandson. <laughs> Grandmother lied. <laughs> <laughs> but I was still in college, but when she died, I had her funeral. And when I went up to see her, uh, to see the, to, to do the funeral in Philadelphia, uh, her Bible was opened, it was marked at, at Psalm 71, a great, great psalm that says, Lord, when I'm old and gray-headed, forsake me not until I've shown thy strength unto this next generation. <coughs> I can't think of anything well. more wonderful uh, to leave this world with and Lord when I'm old and gray headed then I've shown the strength to the next generation. Speaking of next generation they took me to a play yesterday at King's Academy. That is some place up there, King's mm -hmm. Academy. It's a wonderful place, a wonderful school. The theater is magnificent. Mm -hmm. It's just first class productions. 
I slept through most of it because <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't my cup of tea. There was a lot of shouting going on and carried on, and it was to play Matilda and everybody else. They, you know, the, the grandchildren with us, and they. Oh, it was wonderful! It's just a great. Day. I couldn't get into it. I just couldn't get a lot of screaming and carrying on. But evidently, one of the children was that the mother was behind me because every time they they clapped, it, it woke me up. Every time they clapped, so it, was, it was kind of a hard time. All right, now I have more songs here than we have time for, but that's okay because this will be a sermonette for Christianettes. Uh, we'll just do a, 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 a light thing today. But the month of May, you know, the Song of Solomon, that's the love song. Uh, it's a beautiful song. And it, my beloved is mine and I am his. A lot of hymns have been written on that. Bernard de Clairvaux wrote 233 hymns and sermons on just the Song of Solomon. But one of the great lines in the Song of Solomon is about, we belong to him, is I am the Rose of Sharon, I am the Lily of the Valley. And so we have a, a wonderful hymn that was written there called The Lily of the Valley. And it's in our book, it's number 626. And the Lily of the Valley is the month of May's flower, 626. If you'll turn to it there, it's a, a bounty song, but it's talking about the Lord Jesus who is the real lily of the valley. 626. Some words, 
but uh, we've adapted that, and so we're going to use the words that are printed for you there. Uh, it's easy to say. We do it every once in a while, once in every blue moon, uh, but it's a beautiful song, and it's because there are today, you know, there's protesters all over the world about my body, my body, and all this kind of stuff and nonsense, uh, and, and they're thirsty women. They've never met the Lord Jesus in a personal, loving way and know how wonderful he is and how marvelous is life and the gift of life and especially Amen. how wonderful is this whole concept that God created called a mother. Amen. And so in the song is, there is a river and it flows from deep within. And uh, it, as, you, as you hear it, you'll be able to sing it. I'm going to get Jonathan up here to help me sing it. So here we go.
like that song. Do you Amen. like that song? Amen. And now we have one more song to sing before we move on with more of our worship service. Incidentally, do you realize that this is the simplest type of worship service there is? You gather together, you sing a few songs, you hear the word preached. That's exactly what they did in the ancient days, before we got into all the banners and all the fanfare and all the incense. We just got together and sang in those catacombs in Rome secretly many times. Oh, and our next song is a great hymn. It's talking about our mothers, and it's Now Thank We All Our God, 788 in your hymn book. Fanning the flames of our own lust, 
neglecting your commands and foolish pride. Vain hope, we seek worldly wisdom to sustain us, but as we look about, we see it failing. Neither do we love our neighbors as ourselves, but we fear what they think and their opinions, and they seem to slander them even behind their back. Father, forgive us. For the sake of Jesus' blood, wash us clean, Holy Spirit, in the blood of our Savior, and grant us this morning to have the assurance of pardon and the fruit of repentance. Lord, because of your unassailable promises in your word, we with confidence submit these, our petitions. We know that we need you. Help us, Holy Spirit, to repent from our sins, that we would walk before you with a clear conscience, with all boldness. Teach us to pray as we ought, Lord Jesus, and give us new zeal to bear testimony of that great love, and give hope to those who are groaning without hope. Bestow perseverance, Lord, and holiness upon the ministers of your gospel, especially those that in, in this day are experiencing tribulation for it. And we ask that you will provide for the needs of our congregation and glorify your name, therefore, among the nations. For those who are mourning, give them comfort. Those who are sick, we ask that you would strengthen their spirit. Those who are anxious about the worries of the world, give them the faith that they need. We ask all these things knowing that you, who did not spare your only Son, will freely give us all things. For you are for us, so who can be against us? We pray in the manner that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, we ask that you would stand, greet each other in the name of the Lord Jesus, in which we just pray. Let us know, and so that we can we can do that. 
Uh, tomorrow and Tuesday, we also, if you see printed there, the circles are, are back to meeting. Lydia Circle tomorrow night at 7 p.m. and Mary Circle on Tuesday at 11. Don't miss it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if you're visiting us, please sign the, the guest cards. We can get your information. We promise not to spam you. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you are a, a mother, don't neglect to get one of uh, these Mother's Day pins. They're free of charge uh, for you. And I think that's all the, the announcements that I have, and I'll turn it over to Joe for that. I like to begin Mother's Day thinking about when the little girls are born <coughs> and that wonderful song. And if you know it, Sing it, sing it with me. It's not a hymn, but in a way it's a, it's a tribute. I think about when Elise was born, my daughter, and, uh, and every, you know, not every, God does not call every woman to be married. He does not call every woman to be a mother. Uh, but we all had mothers, if we we're here today, uh, and some had great mothers, and some had mothers who were busy in the world and social life, and didn't give them all the time of day, but most mothers, if you're here today, it's because they had a good influence on you. So listen to this little song. I'll try to sing it. You sing with me. <laughs> you're the end of the rainbow, my heart of gold. Your daddy's little girl to have and hold. A precious gem is what you are. Your mommy's bright and shining star. You're the spirit of Christmas, my star on the tree. You're the Easter bunny to your mommy and me. <laughs> your sugar, your spice, your everything nice. And your daddy's little girl. You're the end of the rainbow, my palm of gold. Your daddy's little girl to have and hold. A precious gem is what you are. Your mommy's bright and shining star. You're the treasure I cherish, so sparkling and bright. You were touched by holy and a beautiful light, like angels that sing a heavenly thing. And your daddy's little girl. Dear ladies, I hope that your daddy could sing that for you someday, or that he did, and you, you knew that love that was so important to us. There's wonderful uh, verses in the Bible. We're going to sing one more before we have our offering time. Uh, and what I've done, I know I probably shouldn't do it. I keep throwing, <coughs> these, I keep throwing these fastballs to the musicians. <laughs> but the hymn is number 404 yeah. in the book, fellas. Uh, and... and um, so then, uh, if you'll get it, it's in our 404, and it's this little song on the back about faith of our mothers. This will be our offering hymn, uh, if you take a look at that. It's to the tune of faith of our fathers, but somebody has given us some wonderful words as a tribute to our the women in our lives, our mothers. Faith of our mothers living still. Softly to begin with, and we'll build it up. Faith of our mothers living still in real song and daytime prayer in nursery little and fireside glow. Thy presence still pervades the air. Faith of our mothers living. We will be true. 
into the world and the marvel of birth for the <coughs> woman who has borne our bodies while you were doing your marvelous work to knit together each joint and sinew and marrow in the bones. Truly, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. How can we pay you for the eye that sees, or the heart that beats, or the emotions that we have of laughter, and the times of sorrow and tears, and all the mechanical things that this body of ours does? Thank you, God, for how you have made us. And we pray today that more people may have an appreciation of your handiwork, and that you not only made us, but you preserve us. You brought us to this good place today, that we might be uplifted, that we might not grovel in our sins, for we know that there are many, but by your power and by your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord, your justice has been fully satisfied so that we come to you today, not as pardoned aliens or criminals, but as your own dear children, as the benefit of Christ's death, we are adopted and given your own name. Thank you for that gift. Now, bless the offerings we bring today that there may be provision in this place to do all your holy will. For we ask it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Give us some thought, some meditation, some something we can hang a hook on, Lord, that when we leave this place we shall say as the apostles of old, Lord, it was good for us to be here. Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, since you took the offering and we've received God your money, we're giving you a little trinket here for the mothers here. <laughs> so if you didn't get mother anything today, <laughs> you should take one of these wonderful gold tone parts. I like the little song. He gave to me a ring of gold, the brightest ever seen. 
It must have come from Ireland for now, my lapels green. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there, we want you to have it if, if you'll take that with you. Uh, we have some for you. Now, you know, we've just come off of Easter, haven't we? And we've just celebrated our Lord's resurrection. I'm thinking about the times he was popping in and out among the congregations that were assembled there, the small groups and then the big group, 500 at one time. You don't have mass hysteria and hypnosis that way. And the Apostle Paul said, the people are still alive if you challenge us. Ask them their witnesses, they can tell you. And as Charles Colson said, 12 men couldn't keep alive for 30 days. And so you're not going to have, that. You're not going to have these 12 apostles multiplying and teaching a lie and then being willing to die for it. And, and you would die for something if you thought it was the truth, but you're not going to die for something you know is a lie. So they saw it. Um, on the way to Calvary, do you remember the story? On the way to Calvary, our blessed Lord was carrying his cross. The miracle was that he ever got to the cross because he had been beaten 39 times with a bastinado, the Roman flagellum with pieces of spike and and sharp things in it. His back was a bloody mess. The whip didn't just stay on his back, it wrapped all around him, so he was cut all over. And on the way to the cross, he stumbled, not once, not twice, but three times. And so the Roman soldiers, they saw a man there, and he and his two sons had come in from the fields to go shopping. His name was Simon of Cyrene. The Bible says that they compelled him, they constricted him. You, you come here. You carry this cross. And so Simon of Cyrene carried his cross all the way to Golgotha. What has that got to do with Mother's Day? Because we don't know how God sows seeds. The Bible tells us, Mark tells us this. They compelled Simon of Cyrene. And then it said, Mark tells us this. Who cares? He was the father. He was the father of... Uh, of two boys um, and one of the boys name was Rufus and the other was I think it was um, I, I've got it written down here Andrew or something like that Andronicus I forget his name but anyway um, he was the father of his two boys now why would Mark tell us that well there's no reason but then after the apostle Paul was converted later on he wrote a letter to a church that was just getting started in a, the capital city of the world. Paul said, I've got to get to Rome because that's the crossroads of the world. All roads lead to Rome. And Paul wanted to get there. And when he had gotten there on an occasion, he wrote back a letter to the Christians in Rome. You can read this in chapter 16. It's boring. Chapter 16 is boring because it's just one of these, hello, say hi to, be sure to say hi to, be sure to say hi to. But then he says this, be sure to say hi to Rufus and his mother, for she was a mother to me. Can you believe that? Could that have been the same Rufus, the son of Simon of Cyrene? Yes, most likely it was. And that means that somewhere along the line in Paul's life, when he became a believer and was just a neophyte, he didn't know anything. He was just a... a Polyblog with his tail tucked in and this Christian business and this Christian faith in Jesus is God and God has paid for my sins and no more lambs and sacrifices, all sacrifices done. But somewhere along the line, somebody took him aside and taught him a few things, a few lessons. And so they loved him. I don't know if Paul ever ate cookies and milk or not. It's always a nice thing to have, cookies and milk. But mothers do things like that. When you come in from school, mother would have a little snack for you. My friend Lenny Sargishi's mother was Jewish. So when he would come in from school, she would have, Lenny, you want some toast and glivola? That's chicken fat. But she took care of it, just put a little chicken fat on the toast and it flavored it. Wonderful, wonderful things that mothers do for you. They looked after you. <laughs> before you were born and they and they they watched over you and you know you can cease <laughs> you can cease being the parent of a child at home but you never do give up on it they're still living today 
I thought all my worries would end when the kids got to be teenagers and then got married and out of there, but no, you love them even today and you want to share in their lives when you can. So that, that's part of the rule of it. But I want to go back today to say, well, where did this, all this come from? And you know where it came from? God himself. You know the most quoted book in the Bible throughout the rest of the Bible is the book of Genesis. It's quoted more than any other book in the Bible because it's the beginning. The first 12 chapters of Genesis tell us how everything happened. And so God made Adam. Now there's two chapters for creation. The first chapter is, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Oh, yes, okay. No, it was the Big Bang. The Big Bang. No, it couldn't have been the Big Bang. You don't have an explosion and have everything in order. <laughs> Amen. 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 The order comes, and then you have the disorder. Amen. That's called the second law of thermodynamics, for yep. those of you who don't think I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> the second law of thermodynamics Amen. is that things are wearing out and going into disorder. So here God created in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now don't be surprised and don't quit listening when I tell you this. The word for God there is plural. And so it could be translated in the beginning gods. Hmm. It's the Greek word El, but it's plural, so it's Elohim. In the beginning, the most powerful force in the world, Elohim, gods, created the heavens and the earth. But we know that that's not true. There's only one God. Now, how do I know that? Because everywhere in the Bible that you read about this God in the plural, he uses the singular verb. So he's trying to tell you that this God is so big that one word God isn't big enough. So he has to capture all of the concept of many gods, every God in the world, every, all, every power, unapproachable fire, laser, all this, and he captures it, but he lets you know it's only one God because he only uses one verb, the singular verb. In the beginning, gods, God created the heavens and the earth. And all through that first chapter of Genesis, it's this great word, El Elohim. That's the God you couldn't approach. You can't go near him. Uh, not just because of who he is, but even if we had not sinned, we could not go near this God unless he allowed us. Because, it, it, you know, our God is a consuming fire. God said it like this, no man has seen me, no man can see me and live. He'd be burned to a crisp immediately because it's the presence of such power. The closest thing, I guess, we came to it are these scary things like Chernobyl mm. or, or the, the, the meltdown where we worry, will this go all the way through to the other side of the earth? These things are powerful things that we fool with that God has put in the universe. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but around the earth right now, there is a circle of ozone that filters out these deadly rays. And so this ozone that is around us, filtering out these deadly rays, allows us to live. We think that before sin came into the world, there may have been an atmosphere of 125 miles which would have filtered out a lot more and man would have lived and been able to live as they did 600, 7, 8, 900 years. That's how they did it because the earth had this great vapor, this envelope around it. But God didn't want to just create a world and not have anything to do with it. So the second chapter of Genesis. The first chapter of Genesis, everything... Uh, Jonathan taught us this morning everything God made was good. And it wasn't just good, it was very good. You consider how marvelous these things. Consider yourself how marvelous you are. Mm. If, if you break the wheel of the wagon, it's going to be broken. But you cut your finger, it's going to heal. Mm. It, it's going to do okay. And he gave us spare parts. He gave us two things. If I lose an eye, I've got one more. Isn't that marvelous? Mm. He, he, he's done so many good things for us. Spare parts, spare parts. So in Genesis chapter 2, after God had created the world, now Genesis chapter 2, it says, in the day that God created. But it doesn't just say that. It says, in the day that the Lord God created. And here's a new word, a brand new word. We've translated, we've tried to be reverent about doing it, so we take these four Hebrew letters that say his word, his name, 
and we put other letters with them to pronounce it. So we read, in the beginning, Jehovah God. And that's the closest we can get to the name. The name means I am, that I am. But it's the covenant name. It's not just Elohim. I can't come into the presence of Elohim. But God now wants to have fellowship with his creation. So he condescends to give us an access. And the access is in his name, Yahweh. So we come into the presence. That's the name of the Lord God, Yahweh. Jesus is the word Yahweh, Savior. It's the combination. So that's who we worship. The one when Moses said, I'll tell them that you're supposed to come and follow me, but they're going to not believe me. Who shall I say sent me? And God said, you tell him that I am has sent you. What? That sounds ridiculous. <laughs> but that's what Moses did. Mm -hmm. Who shall I say sent me? The I am has sent me. Mm -hmm. See, you can't say that. You don't have an I am. You, you thought you did. You may think you do, but you don't. You are a past, and you have a little bit of a future, but you don't have really the present. Because the moment you say, I am, time has moved you on. Mm. I was. But this God sees things from the beginning. Here's the beginning. Here's the end. And just as you can see everything between my two fingers, time and space and matter, that's the way God sees the world. He's the I am. He's out of it, but can also come in it. And so he's eminent, but he's transcendent. And so he did this. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he did when he, when he made this creation, and he had some talks with Adam, and Adam, he was a farm boy, but he was a brilliant farm boy. The Bible says that God brought him to Adam, brought to Adam the, the animals, and so Adam, he named them. Now, to, in the Hebrew, if you name something, it means you understand it. You understand it. You can appreciate it. So he brought everything to Adam. Now, what did he bring? Well, I'm sure he had a few dinosaurs in there. He could have. Why not? Mm -hmm. uh, what happened to that? Well, they went out with the flood. He had these animals that come to him. Did Adam understand every kind of animal? No, because we've had inbreeding since then, and so we can, we created Labradoodles. <laughs> and <all sorts> of <laughs> of we, we've done this ourselves. But then, essentially, there was dog, and there was cat, and then we had all tigers and lions and all. But here's what he did. And I love this. He looked at Adam. There was something missing. There was something missing. And so God said, everything else he says is good. And then when it comes to Adam, he says, um, it's not good that the man should be alone. Beloved, that is true through all the ages. He made us as social creatures. We're not supposed to be alone. It's not good that the man should be alone. And so what did God do? And I love this. It was painless. The creation of woman was painless for Adam. He anesthetized him. He gave him a deep sleep. You know the first thing Betsy and I say to each other in the morning? How'd you sleep? <laughs> it's not our age. We said, how'd you sleep? Uh, it shows you how old I am. How'd you sleep? Because the, kind, the Bible tells us that as we get older, the book of Ecclesiastes says that the sound of a bird will wake you up. That anything will disturb you or wake you up. Uh, so sleep is a one. Isn't sleep a wonderful thing? Mm -hmm. And you know, we saw that Moody Science film that shows you that man's natural estate, in the hypothalamus gland or something like that down there, man's natural state is sleep. And when he is awake, it's because this gland is telling him, wake up. And so God says, it's not good the man should be alone. So he caused not just sleep, but a deep sleep to come on Adam. And Adam slept. And then from his head, no, it wasn't from his head. Oh, well, it was from his feet. No, it wasn't from his feet. <laughs> She's not to rule over him. She's not to be his slave. It was from his side. He used to be his companion. He took one of Adam's ribs. And you know what rib he took? It's the one that man, it's the one that men needed to understand women. That's the rib he took. <laughs> <laughs> he took that rib. And he created woman. 
Now, there's a play on words here. It's in the Hebrew. I'm not good at these languages. I just throw them out to let you think that I know them, but I really don't. But I had to take them. I had four years of Latin, three years of Greek, and three years of Hebrew. And I'm still learning English. <laughs> but the word for man is ish. I-S-H, ish. That's the Hebrew word for man. God created Adam, means from the ground. And he's ish. And then God makes his sleep come upon him. And God does a masterful work. He shapes Eve. And then he says, wake up, wakey, wakey. And Adam opens his eyes. And he looked. And you know what he said? The word for woman in Hebrew is Isha. Isn't that amazing? He's Ish, but woman is Isha. This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called Isha. And so God made woman. And then he said, now be fruitful and multiply. And so they brought forth children into the world. But not, not too long before that, a terrible thing happened. And that was the woman was inquisitive. You know, a man's sins are usually sexually oriented. Most of man's sins are sex. He's always... <laughs> <laughs> but a woman's sins are, are not that way. They're not always that way. Uh, a woman's sins are more like inquisitive and, uh, and longing to know something and to stick your nose in business and not your own. That's, that's basically women's sins. <laughs> now, if you go to the beach with your husband and you're at the beach and and you're watching him and some blonde walks by in a bikini somewhere, he's looking at the blonde in the bikini. She's looking at her hairdo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference is <laughs> And so they were to have children and it was going to be blessed, but you know what happened? She got inquisitive and then we know this, that the serpent being more, being powerful and deceptive. And the word for the, the serpent, is, is uh, a beautiful word, means the shining one, Nahushtam. The Nahushtam. He beguiled her. He said, Has God said you're having a great life? You're really not. He doesn't want you to be like him. <coughs> God said you can eat all the fruit of the trees, and she said, Well, yes, but the, not of the knowledge of good and evil. The, well, why not? Not of the tree of life, not of the knowledge of good and evil. But you see, I think God said this, Adam, in order that the, you may know your right relationship with me, we'll ha we have to have to show you free, and you're not a puppet on a string, you're not a marionette, you're free, you can show your love just by obeying me. So don't eat of uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. and they just picked out a tree. They said, okay, we'll say you can have every tree you want, but not that one, don't eat that one. Mm. That was the mango. <laughs> because that's the only tree worth eating and getting in trouble for. <laughs> so he said, don't eat, don't eat that tree. Don't eat through that tree. But if any other tree you can eat. And the devil said, has God really said that you can't do it? But I'll tell you. And she said, no, God has given us freedom. And they said, well, you don't have perfect freedom. You don't think you know everything. You, there's things that you don't know. You just know the right side. You know, a coin has two sides to it. If I flip it up, it's heads or tails. tails, heads or tails. All Adam knew was everything good. He knew everything right. He did not know the obverse. He did not know wickedness. He knew love, but he didn't know lust. He knew pride, but he didn't know the wrong kind of pride. He had dignity, but not foolish pride. And so when God created him, the devil tries to undermine that. And he says to Eve, uh, you don't know the flip side of life, sister. You haven't been down the Bowery. And so being inquisitive, she ate of the fruit and then she gave to her husband to eat. And then the big choice Adam had was this. Oh God, I love her. Shall I turn her in? Or shall I spend eternity with her? 
and he loved her enough that he said, I don't want to lose her. So he ate, and the whole human race that was in his belly and in his groins and in her womb felt the effects of sin and shuddered, and the earth went out of joint, and the universe is out of joint because God is out of place. And that's what happened. But thanks be to God, he didn't let it stay that way. He gave him coats of skin, and so he calls Eve, incidentally, the name Eve means the mother of all living. He gave her that after sin came into the world. So he means that he accepted the gift of God, the redemption. What is redemption? To buy back. The sin is remitted. God gave them coats of skin. Now this is the way you're going to have to come to me because I'm a holy God. You can't come into my presence with your sin. And to this day you cannot. If you don't have Christ in your hearts, you cannot stand before a holy God. You're under God's wrath. We preach the love of God, but we also have to preach the justice of God. There's no way God can take a sinner into heaven if he doesn't have the blood of the covenant upon him. So that's why it's important that we send out the missionaries to tell them there is a river that flows from deep within. It's Christ's blood. Consequently, man believed and he accepted the coats of skin God gave him and he knew that if I'm coming into his presence, I've got to bring a substitute. So the substitute is the lamb. He brings the lamb. For 2,000 years they were bringing lambs, bringing lambs, killing them, put their hand on, on the head of the lamb and say, oh God, this is what I've done. I've broken this commandment, this commandment, this. There are only 10, but just think, if you break one, you've broken them all. If you're hanging from a chain of 10 lakes, all you have to do is break one and you fall. And so when you break one, you, you fall. And then one of those commandments is this. The first one with a promise. Mm. Honor your father and your mother. That your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God gives you. How wonderful that is. But you know what? Not every mother, not every father is honorable. Let's face it. Mm. Not every mother, not every father. I deal with people all through life in 55 years of ministry who've had horrible homes, whose father was abusive. That, that happens. But it's the basic principle. Thank God that you have a body, that you have, a, you're, have, you have life. Life is so important. All right, now I have to bring the lesson to a close and just tell you, if you were God, what kind of a person would you want to be the mother to your son, the Lord Jesus, when you sent him into the world? And so God looked down over all the universe. This is all done before, before it ever happened. He planned the family. He planned the line of the family. He planned the intricacies of that line to preserve that family so that the seed would pass on and the right one would be born. And he chose Mary, the mother of our Lord. And he chose Joseph to be the foster father of our Lord. And so... He chose them, and it's true. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. But she was the vehicle. She was not to be the reciprocal or the end of our prayers. She was just the vehicle. And so she offered herself. She said, be it unto me as the Lord has said. And my soul doth rejoice in God my Savior. I have a Savior too. Mary has a Savior too. And then after Jesus was born... We believe the scriptures teach that there were other brothers and sisters they were allowed to be born to. Joseph and Simon and Jude and sisters too, that, that they were born in the family. So it was a happy family. And James, James was born too. So mothers, I salute you. I thank you for all that you've done. Now what's happened today is the devil has fostered a lie. And, and the child is not safe in the womb anymore. And you know, the people who did this were not believers. They were unbelievers, and they they were nasty people. They were racists, really, to do this. The founder of Planned Parenthood did not like the black race and the inferior race, and so she planned uh, she planned in order to get rid of them to put the abortion clinics in the very neighborhoods where there were mostly the black people, and so that's the way she began Planned Parenthood, and that's the way they function. Uh, abortion. Uh, is a terrible thing. It is the killing of a life. And the president the other day, he slipped up when he said, the death of a child. He 
they call it a child because they try to say it's just a piece of flesh. But no, it's not. It's a real human being. Amen. And where does murder come in? Well, I close the lesson with this. You see, the penalty for murder is death. You can commit murder, but you have to forfeit your life. You can no longer live here. Now, a murderer can go to heaven. If the murderer repents of his sins and says, Oh God, I'm sorry, I should never have done this. Have mercy upon me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to be my Savior. That man will be in heaven. We'll see him in heaven. But he forfeits his right to live on earth. He can't live here anymore. Because murder is not just against a person. David had Uriah the Hittite, the husband of Bathsheba, killed to try to cover his adultery. But, but David, in his prayer, he realizes it took him a year to pray, and he kept putting it off. I will not bend the knee. I will not say I'm guilty. I will not confess my sin. And finally he said, oh God, day and night your hand was heavy upon me. Every bone in my body waxed hot until I confessed my sin. So he confessed his sin. Psalms, Psalm 51. Read it sometime if you're feeling guilty about anything. Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. And then he says this, against thee, the only have I sinned. Like, what are you talking about? You killed Uriah. But ultimately it's against God. Uriah was made in the image of God. Yeah. Unlike any other creature in the whole wide world, you are made in the image and then likeness of God. Mothers, we love you. We couldn't be here without you. Now we have to do what we can to elevate these poor women who are so misled mm -hmm. and teach them the true use of who they are. And men... We need to know how to control ourselves and not chase them and not go after them and not ask them, if you really love me, you'd show me you love me, but you know what? No, 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 no. No, marriage is lawful. It's called by God. It's blessed by God. Anything else is a sin. Mm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that we celebrate mothers. Thank you for Anna Jarvis, who took it upon herself to really pursue the fact that we celebrate mothers who have done so much for us. Bless our congregation today. If there's a heart today that needs forgiveness, show them the forgiveness of Christ. There's no sin that cannot be forgiven, and there's no love that's withheld when we confess our sins. So thank you today that we are 100% in the love of Christ, and you'll keep us, and you'll care for us, and finally you'll take us up to glory, there to live with you and our loved ones who are there with you ever to sing your praises. Thank you for this day, for each person here, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Stand and receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and leave the thoughts, the smile of his face. He's not angry with you. And help you to hear his word whisper deep in your soul where only you and God live. Well done, good and faithful servant. I see you struggling in the mists and the mystery of life. Be not afraid. I am in the mist and I am in the mystery. And may God give you his perfect peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sing with me, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives.
Amen. Amen.